Okay. Since we didn't get to this in class, I just wanted to work through the first free response problem on the applied forces homework here. So this problem, um, part A, asks us to draw a free body diagram for each block uh, next to the block in the illustration. So we have two blocks here. One of them is on a table, that's the five kilogram block. Meanwhile, the two kilogram block is falling down towards the floor. And the key here is that they are connected by a single rope. And the assumption we have to make in this problem is that the rope has the same tension throughout. Okay? So the whole system will be accelerating in this kind of counterclockwise direction. Okay, so the five kilogram block that'll be moving to the left two kilogram block moving down. So I mark that here with this acceleration arrow going in the positive direction. Now, for the free body diagram of the two kilogram block, that's pretty simple. It's in the air, so there's no table to support it. Gravity, of course, will be pulling it down. So that's FG there. Meanwhile, the force due to tension in this rope, that will be holding it up, okay? And technically, since this whole system is accelerating, this gravity vector, that should be drawn a little bit longer, just to emphasize that there is a net force in the downward direction here. Okay. Meanwhile, for the five kilogram block, we have a few more forces at work because there is a table here. So that table will supply a normal force in order to prevent the block from falling through the table. Meanwhile, gravity is still acting in the downward direction. However, in the problem, they specify that the table is frictionless. Apparently, it's made of ice. So we don't need a force of friction opposing the direction of motion. Instead, we just have this force of tension here that's pulling it along to the left. So that is the free body diagram. Take a good look. For part B, the problem asks us to calculate the acceleration of the five kilogram block. And because of the setup here, we have the acceleration of the two kilogram block is going to be the same thing. The system is joined, so they will have to accelerate at the same rate. So let's first take a look at the two kilogram block. Okay? First step is to always write out your net force equation. So we write that the sum of the forces is two kilograms times the acceleration. Now for the net force here, we can substitute in the forces that we know of, so gravity and tension. We say that our positive direction is with the acceleration, so let's have the force of gravity minus the force of tension here, and we just carry down the right side. Now for force of gravity, that's just the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration, so we substitute in those values and carry down the right side again and just keep the minus FT there. Now we have two variables in this equation, FT and the acceleration of the system, so we'll be using the substitution method in order to eventually find both. So it's helpful to solve this equation here for one of the variables. So we solved for tension by adding over this term and then subtracting that two kilogram times the acceleration. So this is an implicit expression for the force of tension here. So we need another equation in order to find the acceleration. Let's analyze the five kilogram box for this. With this one, it has two dimensions, the y and the x direction. For the y direction, it's not going through the table at all, and it's not flying off the table, so we can, we can assume that the acceleration in that particular direction is zero. So our net force equation, the right side just goes to zero. Now, the two forces in the y direction are the normal force, which points up, and gravity, which points down. And because those are the only two at play, they have to be equal to each other for the system to cancel out and the acceleration there to be zero. The problem is with this, since we don't have friction, we don't really care about the normal force at this part here. So we don't really need to continue solving this. We could solve it and find out what the normal force is, but without friction, not that exciting. 
So instead, let's move on to the x direction. Okay? Again, we write out our net force equation. The sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to mass times acceleration. And the only force in the x direction here is tension. So the force of tension is 5 kilograms times acceleration. Same thing. We have two variables in this equation, but now we have two equations. So we can combine these together using the substitution method. So on the left side here, this is just that expression from analyzing the two kilogram block. Then on the right side here, that's the expression we got from analyzing the forces in the x direction for the five kilogram block. So whenever you have an equation like this with variables on both sides, you need to gather them all together. So let's add this two kilograms times the acceleration over to the other side. So that'll give us seven kilograms times the acceleration. And that's seven kilograms, that's really just the total mass of the system here, five and two. So that makes sense. And then we have that 19.6 Newtons. That's coming from the falling two kilogram block. So that, in a way, is kind of the force driving this whole process here. So in order to find the acceleration of the system, we just take our force, divide it by the mass, and that will give us 2.8 meters per second squared for the acceleration. Now that we've used our force analysis to figure out the acceleration, we can apply our kinematics ideas in order to find how far the five kilogram block will move in 0.5 seconds and also what the speed of the five kilogram block will be in 0.5 seconds, okay? So for any problem for kinematics, you always wanna write down what you're given. In this case, the problem tells us that the five kilogram block initially sits on the table. So given that, we can assume that the initial velocity is zero meters per second. Also it tells us that the amount of time has passed is 0.5 seconds. And we want to know the final velocity and the change in position, also known as the displacement, if our acceleration is that 2.8 meters per second squared that we just calculated from our net force analysis. So first, let's find the distance. For that, we can break out our second kinematic equation, which says that x minus x naught, so delta x, is equal to initial velocity times the time. Since initial velocity is zero, this whole term goes away. And so we're just left with the 1 half a delta t squared. We substitute in what we have, 2.8 meters per second squared and 0.5 seconds. We multiply the half times the 2.8, that'll give us 1.4. 0. 0.5 squared is 0. 0.25. We multiply that out, we get 0. 0.35 meters. Pretty simple one dimensional kinematics problem. The hard part was finding that acceleration, but we've already done that. For part D, that asks us to find the final velocity after 0.5 seconds. So we can just break out that first kinematics equation. We don't know this. We know that initial velocity is zero. And we know A and delta T, plug those in, solve for the final velocity. And that's it. Part E asks us to find the force of tension in the rope. From the equations in part B, we know that the force of tension is 19.6 newtons minus two kilograms times the acceleration. That was from analyzing the two kilogram box, but there's an even easier equation to find the tension. From analyzing the five kilogram box, we know that force of tension is equal to five kilograms times the acceleration. So we multiply that out and we should get 14 meters, or sorry, 14 Newtons for that. So last two sections, we must account now for friction and it tells us that the coefficient of static friction is 0.3, kinetic friction is 0.2. The two kilogram block is not going to be affected by this friction, so we still have the same expression for force of tension. But now for the five kilogram block, we care about the normal force, which we can find by setting it equal to the weight, which is 49 Newtons. Our net force equation in the x direction will then change because now we have friction. First, we must check if the block will actually ever start moving. So we need to compare our kind of driving force here, tension, to the maximum of static friction. So when we do out the algebra, 
we get a positive result for acceleration. So that tells us that the block indeed will start moving. So now, to find what the problem is looking for, Sebastian we Torres need to use the... To ignore that. We need to use the kinetic friction coefficient here. So when we plug that into our equation, we now have 0 0.2 instead of the 0 0.3 there, and we get an acceleration of 1.4 meters per second squared. Part G asks us to find the overall force of tension with friction into account, and so we can just plug it back into this two kilogram tension equation here, and we find that our force of tension has now gone up to 16.8 newtons. And that's the whole problem.